quote, Donald Trump confirms plans to jail opponents. Biden's now accusing Donald Trump of doing exactly what he did. So Donald Trump is again suggesting his political opponents could be jailed if he wins re-election as retribution for last week's guilty verdict against him in New York City. Donald Trump, who wants to put them before firing squads, basically. He wants to put them all in jail. He's unbelievable the way he talks about his opponents. I'm telling you, Trump yeah. could end up rolling the score. I've got the Congress. I've, I've got the Supreme Court. I own it all. I am a dictator. This is just another desperate disinformation stunt from the failing Biden campaign. The New York Times, Trump vows to prosecute rivals, put rule of law on the ballot. Trump vows legal revenge against enemies. Trump wants retribution. That's dangerous, unlawful, and un-American. These, these people look like they're hallucinating. I mean, the, the Trump derangement syndrome has gotten to physical manifestations at this point. When he tells you that he's going to do something or he says something to that effect, you should take that very seriously. And look, am I concerned? I'm concerned for myself. I'm concerned for my family. I'm concerned for many of us who have uh, spoken the truth about the danger that he is. Throw the facts aside. They just simply don't matter because Democrats want to stoke fear. It's terrifying. It's frightening. Um, I, I have lo a lot of conversations with uh, former colleagues, people who are or were in the intelligence and law enforcement community uh, and may have worked in, you know, the Obama administration, other places. And, you know, people are really trying to assess, like, what is life going to be like if Donald Trump wins a second term? And on a very personal level, I mean, these are torturous discussions with their family members about whether or not they have to leave the country uh, to avoid being wow. unconstitutionally and illegally detained. This is what sparked their hoax. Watch. Focus on those that want people to believe that you want retribution, that you will use the system of justice to go yeah. after your political so, enemies. So, number one, they're wrong. It has to stop, because otherwise we're not going to have a country. Look, when this election is over, based on what they've done, I would have every right to go after them. We can't have this stuff go on. Because you know what? When Biden goes out, everyone says bye-bye, and then he gets indicted two days later, and they go after him. The, the country doesn't want that. But I think the president brings up an important point that needs to be considered. For the longest time, this country, pe politicians violate the law. Elected officials violate the law. And when they leave office, they didn't get prosecuted. You go back to the late 1990s, early 2000s. In 2000, independent counsel Robert Ray had Hillary Clinton making false statements in the Travelgate investigation. They did not prosecute her. In an interview with the far-right network Newsmax last night, Trump continued to claim he didn't receive a fair trial, complaining the jurors never smiled at him. <sighs> he also threatened to prosecute his perceived foes, including former... Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who had nothing to do with the verdict against him. And you know what? They didn't want it with Hillary Clinton either. After we won against Hillary, people would, accept, you know, would say, lock her up, lock her up. And I said, wouldn't it be terrible if I locked up the wife of the president of the United States former and locked up the former secretary of state? It's a terrible thing. I think the Democrats probably had a model that if we indict him, uh, Donald Trump will go down in the polls 0.8 percent. And if there's a conviction, then he'll go down 0.2.5. Wow. Well, the, the model is blown up in their face. Yeah. Every time he's been indicted, his popularity goes up. The fundraising goes up. Every time there are more charges, every time there is another indictment, his poll numbers actually go up, as does his fundraising. We were waiting to see these polls because we want to see if anything changed in terms of the support for Trump post the conviction. Former President Trump is leading President Biden in Nevada, in Arizona, and in Florida. Uh, Biden and Trump are tied in the usually blue state of Virginia. That's an important one. Voters in all four states say they trust the former President Trump over Biden to handle both the economy and immigration. But the polls kept sliding for Biden. But they really thought, they really thought a guilty verdict in that hush money case, that would do the trick. He believes that they will recommend a one-year term in prison. Uh, and that is because... When you spend a year in prison in New York or under, you serve in Rikers Island, okay? 
He absolutely deserves jail time because he is an ongoing threat to society and to our community. Here's the former FBI director suggesting someone may need a jail sentence. I would ordinarily say it's unlikely in a white collar offense of this sort, but this is a defendant who's begging for a jail term by taking a flamethrower, not just to the judge, but to the entire process and the jury. A judge will take that very seriously into consideration in deciding whether to deter this person and to send a message more broadly, he needs to spend some time behind bars. You were asked about the possibility that Judge Marchand might send you to jail. You said something that really kind of got my attention. What did you say? That it didn't phase you in the sense that if that's what it takes, you don't have to be doing this. You could be playing golf every day and you probably wouldn't be charged with anything. Well, I think I say it about almost all of these cases that are brought against me are doing it for the purposes of hurting a political opponent of Biden and trying to get him to win. And he's the worst president in the history of our country. But in the case that you're talking about, I said very strongly that uh, I'm very proud to fight for our Constitution. And if that's what it takes, uh, everybody said, this is such a minor thing. You don't go to jail for this. They're telling you that they think President Trump's going to win. And what they've done is coming back to bite them where the sun doesn't shine. They know that they are screwed and so screwed because never has a president and a party and the minions in the media shown greater disregard for the courts, the legal system, and the judicial system. Democracy dies in darkness. Maxine Waters, no relation, says Trump's planning a civil war and it's time the FBI investigate his campaign. I am going to spend some time with the criminal justice system, with the justice system, asking them, tell us what's going on with the domestic terrorists. Are they preparing a civil war against us? Should we be concerned about our safety? What is he doing with this divisive language? It is dangerous, and we're going to have to make sure that we understand uh, that we're not at risk with this man talking in the way that he's doing. How far is this going to go? Are they going to be attacking? Whom are they going to attack? What are we going to do? I've got to get on with trying to get an investigation going. Trump's not even in office yet, and they're trying to open up a preemptive anti-terror investigation <laughs> for a threat they dreamt up. Uh, they started using the official levers of power to start going after Trump. And then once he was out of office, they found a new tack and they executed it. Right. So the question is, is the next president, if it's President Trump, going to continue this cycle um, or is he going to say, you know, I'm not going to do it. Right. But those things, if you don't do it, if you don't look at people that are breaking the law, well, then the process will just continue the next time they get in power. So it is a very tough decision. And it, it's something that needs to be thought through very thoroughly because we cannot continue to have the weaponization of the Justice Department and the justice system go after political enemies. Before he died, radio legend and my friend Rush Limbaugh predicted much of this. I know they desperately want Trump gone, and I, I know that they desperately want it codified, that Trump cannot run again. Because make no mistake, they remain scared to death of you, and they remain scared to death of Trump. No matter what they've tried, they can't separate you from Trump. And more importantly, they can't separate you from the ideas. They can't separate you from MAGA. They can't separate you from make America great again. God, do we miss him? And sure enough, Trump is crushing fundraising goals, raking in nearly $300 million in May from over 2 million donations. And there are even signs of life in liberal La La Land. Silicon Valley investor David Sachs hosted a fundraiser last night in uh, San Francisco. Uh, you know, look, it's Pelosi and Gavin Newsom's home. That's progress.